for more on this uh, a landmark victory for women in the soccer world, we are joined by Lisa Delpi Narati. She's the director of uh, MS Medicine Sports Management Program at George Washington University down the street from here, and an associate professor of sports management. Thanks. Uh, good to see you. Thank you very much. We, we were talking about this pay gap between men and women. It sure took a long time to get here. What took so long? Well, you know, the, the status quo is hard to change, and it, can, it requires a fight. And the women have been fighting for 30 years, but really for the last, you know, seven, since 2015, they started the, the talks. 2019, they did the uh, lawsuit. And, you know, it takes a fight. You have to keep in the game. The athletes have a voice, and they've, they are the ones who have been pushing this forward, and you have to give them credit. You know, I mean, I, I think this is absolutely great, but I don't know if you heard our report earlier, but, you know, there are millions and millions of, you know, not just Americans, but people around the world who, who don't get equal pay. I mean, obviously, if you're in sports, you have a, a lot more attention because we're talking about it. But there are so many millions of people that we don't talk about, and they struggle with getting equal pay. Do you think the pandemic has, has sidetracked and hurt that effort? Well, I think the whole DEI movement has been bringing this up to light. And I think um, with the success of the women's soccer players, the, the movement with the WNBA players, um, there is more recognition about the need to have equal pay for women and uh, for, for everybody, actually. So, um, you know, it, we have to continue to talk about it, to keep pushing for equal pay and you know and not let it slide back who is the referee so to speak in this debate because I, I obviously I understand why people want equal pay but somebody has to be the, the champion an organization has to be a champion of this to keep that conversation going as you said how do we do this well you know, many public companies are under scrutiny about how many women, how many people of color, uh, how diverse is their organization, and also, do they pay equally across the board? And so, you know, there's more pressure on companies, and employees need to speak out and let people know that I work in a great company, or I work in a company that doesn't treat us equal. And I, the more that is reported about this topic, the better it's going to be for everyone. Right, right. But let, let's let's be honest. If 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 I was at an organization and I spoke out about something I was not happy about or I thought was unfair, it, it's hard not to be a little bit worried about your 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 own job, right? I mean, how are they going to speak out if maybe they're not fearful, but it maybe culturally it's not accepted? Right. In today's job market, many companies are now having to pay more attention to employees and their needs. So there are different ways now that you can, your voice can be heard. And if they're not paying attention to you, you may want to look at a company that is paying attention to you. Um, there's a lot of assistance now, organizations that help employees have their voice be heard. And I think um, if you are one of these people that aren't having luck um, in, in the way you're communicating your needs, um, seek s support from other women's groups uh, that can help you build your case. Right. I, 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 I know a lot of folks uh, during the, the pandemic had to stay home and, and take care of their, their kids, right, because they had to, had to be at home. And many of them are, are women. Now that people are beginning to go back to work, many of them are saying that I, I can't afford to, to get childcare or I can't afford to go back to work. And the end result of it is that you're not at the office. And some fear by not being in the office, you miss out on promotions, you miss out on the, the, the coffee chat, so to speak, and the culture of, of the companies. How do we remedy that, remedy that in today's environment? There's got to be some way that you can stay present and connected. I mean, we have a, a challenge. A lot of men like to go play golf on the weekends or they go do other things. And, and women don't tend to do some of those bonding activities. And so it does put women at a disadvantage. 
but what can they do? Um, maybe there's a bowling league, maybe there's some other type of sport. Cycling has become very popular where women and men, um, they can go and bond that way. But it is true that if you're not in the office and you're not making some ways to connect, it is a challenge. Yeah, it, you, you definitely, look, you're right. Uh, everyone should speak up when they, they feel when they're comfortable doing so. Um, Professor Lisa from one of my favorite universities, George Washington down the street. Thank you very much. Have a great, uh, great evening there.